Hello everyone, this is the third tutorial in Python programming tutorial series. In this tutorial series, we are learning Python programming and then we will use it to implement different concepts of artificial intelligence. Today we will cover the remaining concepts and remaining topics of Python programming. So the topics that we will cover today are classes. We actually kind of did this, uh, some part of this in the previous uh, week's videos. And we will cover inheritance, constructors, access modifiers, modules, and polymorphism. And we will see whether polymorphism exists in Python or not. All right, so let's start with inheritance. So uh, we covered what is a class in the last week's video. So today we will see what is inheritance. So you must be familiar with the inheritance concept from your object-oriented course. So uh, for a quick revision, we'll just see it. Inheritance is actually defining a new class with little or no modification to an existing class. So what we mean by that is, so for example, this is some class that we have created and there is some code in it and we wanna re reuse that code. So what we can do is we can create another class and we can um, uh, derive this new class from this parent class. So this class will be called as parent class while this new class will be called as child class. And we can also call this parent class as base class. And we can call this child class as a derived class. Right. Okay. And we can derive as many classes as we want from this parent class. So the child class will inherit all the properties of the parent class which are public or protected right we can have as many child classes as we want and the child classes will inherit the properties the attributes the member functions of the parent class so this is a quick summary i'm not explaining the concept of inheritance in object oriented programming in detail this is just the quick summary let's see how do we perform inheritance in python so in python Whenever you create a class, we discussed this in the previous week that we write the keyword class and then the name of the class, right? And further on after this colon and indentation, this is the body of our class. So when we want to perform inheritance, we just write uh, round brackets and the name of the base class in front of the drive class, right? So this is the syntax. The, this is what we are talking about. In the syntax, we write the name of the base class in round brackets before column. So when you do that, uh, this class is automatically derived from this base class. This is the syntax. Let's see the behavior of constructors during inheritance. So I have created two classes here. Uh, the first one is parent class. The second one is child class. And child class is obviously inherited from the parent class. Now you can see that in the parent class, we have a constructor. So you know, this is how we define a constructor. We have a constructor in the parent class, but we don't have any constructor in the child class. We just have some function, but there is no constructor. And then in the body of the program, I have created a, an object C of the child class. You can see that the output of this code is this. The output displays parent constructor. Okay, so we know that whenever an object is created, the constructor of that class is called. But here the object was created of the child class. The object was not created of parent class, right? But the constructor of parent class is has been called. Why? Because you can see clearly that in the child class, there is no constructor. So when uh, you have inherited a class from the other and the child class has no constructor, then the constructor of parent class is called, right? So in this case, when child class has no, con no constructor, the constructor of parent class is called whenever the object is created. What actually happens is when this object is created, this it looks for the constructor here in the child class. And when it doesn't find any constructor, then the call goes over here. So this is actually what happens. Now let's see if we add a constructor to the child class, what will happen then? This is again the same code. And uh, this is my parent class and this is, this is the child class. And now you can see that I have added constructors in both of these classes. So in the parent class, we have parent constructor. In the child class, we have child constructor. And the code is same. So I've just created one object of child class. And the output of this code is this. Now you can see that there you can't uh, find the parent constructor here. So in this code, parent constructor has not run, has not been executed, right? So 
whenever we create a constructor in the child class, the constructor of parent is overridden. So this constructor is overridden. So in that case, the constructor of only child class is called not the parent, right? So it's not doing any function here now. It's not being called whenever we create a child class object. Now the problem is, what if we need this parent constructor too in our code? We have designed something and maybe some part of code is being uh, covered here in the parent constructor, right? Maybe we have some variables. So some variables, maybe you can say A, B and C are being assigned here in the parent constructor while the other variable, maybe D, E and F are being assigned here or whatever. So we need this uh, parent's constructor too. We want it to be used to, to be executed to. We don't want it to be overridden, right? So what do we do then? So for that case, so we add this call in the child class. This super indicates the parent class and with dot init function, we are calling the constructor of the parent class. So this is how we call the constructor of parent class in the child class constructor. And what will happen is, uh, first of all, the call, when, when this object is being created, the call will go to this constructor. And then from here, since we have written this line, from this line, the call will be uh, forwarded to this parent. You can see that the child constructor has been called first and then later on the parent constructor has been called. So from this example, you can see that the order of execution of constructors is like this. First of all, the child constructor will execute and then the parent constructor. The call will co first come here, this will execute and then the parent constructor will execute upon this call so this is the order of execution although we can change it a little bit uh, to some extent and that what we can do is uh, we can remove this line he from here and we can add it at the start of our constructor at the very start before the code of child's constructor so this is what i'm saying maybe we can add this call at this point in the program so we can add the super call here and then we can write all our in code lines of the constructor so this way uh, the constructor of parent will execute first and this is the code of child's constructor that will execute later so that we can do but even then the call to the constructor of child will come here first and then uh, from here on on this super dot init call the parent constructor will be called okay so uh, what was the order of execution of constructors in c plus plus so the answer is uh, you must remember this that the parent constructor was executed first and then the child constructor but in python uh, it is the exact opposite so execution is opposite child constructor is executed first and then the parent constructor and parents constructor is not called if child's constructor is present uh, unless we call it explicitly like we just did uh, other than that it is not called itself and the child's constructor actually overrides the parents constructor in inheritance so this was the summary of what we just did. This is one more example of the same thing, but here I have added some parameters as well. So in the parent class, they, we have a parameter A, and in the child class, we have two other parameters, which are B and C, right? So A is initialized here, and B and C are initialized here. So you can see that we created a child object. We passed two arguments here, which are passed here. So 10 is passed to the variable b, 20 is passed to the variable c, and then here we called our parent class constructor with this call, and we have uh, directly passed 5 here, so actually this 5 is passed here to the variable a, right, and then it is assigned here.